Welcome back to the GSPA game number two between X-Lord at the north position as the pink Zerg and down south. We got Slayer's Boxer as the blue Terran. Right now, Boxer is up 1-0 in this series. And I am very excited not just to be casting these players, but to be casting with none other than who. Hey, what's going on? I'm Husky. Yeah. And yep. uh, Sean, one thing I want to mention really quick is... X-Lord is actually ranked 24th in on the European server, mm -hmm, so I, mm -hmm. I always try and foresee what the comments are going to be, and I have a feeling they're going to be, oh, he got completely crushed and all that, and blah, 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 what a noob and all that. He's not that bad of a player, guys. Oh, he's, he's actually strong, highly yeah. ranked, and that just shows you the build that Boxer went, how powerful that can be if executed absolutely perfectly, and he followed it up on top of that with something that even a lot of top players, I think, would not have had that many workers and a wall in ready to go, as well as, uh, it looks like he's being nice and telling him that there's no close spawns. What a gentleman and a scholar. But uh, anyways, I'm just saying, that build that Boxer went, I would say was perfect for that map. Absolutely. I mean, especially that little tiny exploit by one of the many caverns on Zelnaga Caverns. Wow, very odd build coming out from x -Lord. He did Extractor Trick and waited till he was at 11 of 10 food, and then went extractor and spawning pool and is doing yet another extractor trick to sneak out more drones. So it's going to look like a very early rush play for X-Lord. And oh, this could potentially demolish this barracks opening from Boxer. To note, these two players are in a group with I am Nest T, I am Terran, TSL Killer, and AAA Gaming. Right now, Boxer is 0-1 in his group, and X-Lord is 1-0 in the group. So um, although it's not huge if either player wins or loses at this point, I am guarantee you x -Lord would love to put another win on that map and start his GSPA series off 2-0. So, Sean, on a scale of 1 to completely not surprised, how surprised are you that Boxer is putting both of these bunkers, or both of these barracks, rather, on the low ground here? I'm actually completely not surprised because Boxer <laughs> is the man, Husky. Yeah, totally. So he is going to be rushing. It looks like this is a long, long distance here. So we will see if Boxer is able to hold this off. You can see he does have a supply depot going down at uh, at the entrance of his base, already preparing to be lifting those barracks off. And did the drone, I wasn't paying attention. Yes, the drone did run directly by mm -hmm. those barracks and knows exactly what's going on. And with the early spawning pool, you were mentioning this early before, Sean, that uh, I think he's going to be able to hold this off this time. Yeah, I guarantee you Boxer is going to be lifting those barracks mighty fast. Look, immediately pulling the Marines back. The SCV does fall, and this is actually a very precarious position for Boxer right now because he really needs the Marines out so that way he can defend against the rush, but he really needs to lift those barracks up and stop making Marines so he can protect his front by walling himself back in. And if he doesn't realize how quickly X-Lord got up this uh, spawning pool, he could be in so much trouble. Look at this. The Zergling speed is actually almost done. X-Lord's going to run into these Marines. He's going to have to pull back very quickly, though. He's actually going to go for it. This is not the best engagement for the Zerg player. He's going to lose most of those Zerglings. And we see Boxer pushing that SCV to the front, letting it absorb the damage. And now Boxer Again, with the perfect money timing, pulling the barracks back. So good. Yeah, the timing on that, Sean, was basically, as you put it, so good. The reason for that is, is that was a tense moment, and he had his Marines in the perfect position to go ahead and defend that. Now, I was watching the macro of uh, X-Lord up here, and that expansion was slightly delayed. He did have, he was sitting on that 300 minerals for quite a while. Zergling speed is now done, but Sean, it's not really going to be as useful as it would have been running around in the main base, chasing around the workers, as now, while he will have that map control, Boxer's kind of safely in his base, once again has his command center on the way and you got to remember x lord's expansion is only about a third done right now Ooh, and i think this is some very smart strategy wizarding going on by slayer's boxer himself he saw that his opponent had zerglings and faster zergling speed up doing the good obvious uh decision making planting supply depots worried about uh bane link bus making sure he has a double tight wall but this double refinery play i would not be surprised to see him be getting a very fast factory and there it is going down right now anytime you see someone with fast zergling speed doing things like going for very fast Blue Flame Hellion pushes uh, have been common in the past, but getting quick drops is a great choice because what can Zerg really do versus Medivacs without Aspire? It's very tough to deal with. And totally, Sean, and just kind of looking forward for X-Lord, what, what do you think a good follow-up is? Because a lot of times we'll be like, oh, you should double expand, but if, uh, if Boxer's going for very mobile units, as he does have a second factory on the way as well, I mean, what, what's X-Lord to do here? It's going to be tough to defend three bases. 
Well, I mean, as we've seen I Am Nest T do a lot in the GSL, planting down some roaches and going for a faster third is a great way to deal with virtually all the follow-up aggressions from a two-rax opening. And if the Zerg can even get any information at all, such as Marine Count or even seeing two mules down at once, he'll know almost exactly what the possibility scope is for the Terran. And oh, it looks like Terran is going to be boldly moving down. And Exor trying to do a little bit of juking, but Boxer seems to have a good sense of what he can get away with. And there we see the double Hellion production, the blue flame going down. Boxer's going to be going for a bigger early push. I'm curious to see how X-Lord is going to be dealing with this. Yeah, and as you were mentioning the roaches, Sean, so far we have yet to see anything of the sort. Instead, X-Lord is just following this up with a little bit of static defenses. He does have some Zerglings on the way, and Zerglings not completely useless against Hellions, especially if you can trap them out of position and get that surround. Then that, that line that the, the Blue Flame Hellions will be producing is not going to be doing a ton of splash damage, although it does look like Boxer able to get his expansion up and running. I love the building placement of that bunker, going to protecting the majority of those workers. And it looks like the Zerglings trying to commit here, but Boxer has just been picking away units this entire game. Yeah, I mean, really, really nice positioning there by Boxer. Ooh, and look at this, though, Husky. We see nonstop observing production coming out of X-Lord. We see a Baneling Nest almost at halfway done right now. X-Lord, and look at the natural expansion. We see that there's only six drones there. This is very risky for X-Lord. This is such a big risk. If Boxer moves out for an attack, X-Lord will crush it. Or if Boxer has a specific poor positioning at his natural expansion, X-Lord can crush it. But other than that, I mean, if Boxer just goes all defense, Boxer could easily crush this push, and oh, there it is. The Zerglings surround all the Marines. Blue Flame is done, though. Oh my gosh, Husky Blue Flame Hellions are good against Zerglings. Yeah, some of these Hellions raking in eight kills, six kills, individually another six kills, absolutely terminating that push there, and there was no Banelings to follow up. 1,200 resources lost for our Zerg player, only 600 lost for the Terran, and it does look like Exor trying to do a run by. We'll make it inside the main base as those Splitey posts have not been lifted, but at the same time, he is going to have to deal with these Hellions. He does just that by leaving those Queens there on the ramp. He needs to make sure to not allow those to get away, but I don't know if he was able to do that much damage. Workers killed only four, which considering that uh, our Zerg player is at 20 workers and Boxer's at 38. That is just not the amount of damage he needs to be dealing right now. Yeah, and I love looking at that unit's killed tab. 58 killed, four Slayers. Boxer just in seconds with that blue flame positioning. And even though the Terran did the mistake that Zerg was hoping for, the timing from Boxer is just a little too strong. So right now, Boxer in a very commanding position, actually opting to get two Thors. We see the range attack upgrade going down for his mech units as well as his infantry. So going to be continuing with this marine production. But it looks like we have a little bit of half and half coming up from Boxer. Half Marines and infantry, half metal. But uh-oh, I see some Banelings sneaking their way into the natural. Going to attempt to do as much as possible. He did draw the Whoa. fire of the bunker and is able to get some SCVs there. The remainder of them will safely make it inside the main base. It looks like Thor is arriving just in time to clean that up. Once again, Sean Gow, look at the workers killed. He has managed to rake in 10 worker kills there. But uh, still, the unit's lost tab is double for the Zerg player compared to the Terran. So I, I feel like x has been trying to be extremely cost-effective with these Zerglings and Banelings. But it, I don't know that it's, it's done enough damage just now. Kind of getting caught up in workers with 35 to that 42. Which, unfortunately for x on these far spawn locations, a lot of times you'll see Zerg sit back and drone up. And that's exactly why, because he did take a big risk, like he said. Don't know that it paid off as much as he would like. But of course, remember, remember, Destiny vs. Bomber. It doesn't rhyme, but still, you should really be thinking about that. Because Destiny vs. Bomber, Destiny was way far behind, and how did he pull his way back in? With ridiculous numbers of infestors, and there, Husky, we see the infestation pit going down for X-Lord. X-Lord is at about half the food of his opponents, but now starting to get those infestors up, and if used correctly, can just be completely devastating. Which is why I like seeing these Thors here. I mean, until Nero Parasite is out, the Infestor is not going to be doing a massive amount of damage to the Thors, mm -hmm. as Thors just have a lot of HP, especially with little SCV repair buddies there. And another thing I like that uh, Boxer is doing is keeping his Hellions alive. You can see he has four at each tower, which, I mean, that alone is difficult to take over, especially <laughs> yeah. the and that blue flame. And then I imagine once uh, we see Exord here expanding to the top left side, I imagine once that's up and running, I mean, that's just one more headache for him to have to try and take over. So... 
so far, Slayer's Boxer has been playing well. I really do like the choice of Infestors, though. It seems to be one of the more cost-effective units for Zerg players to use. I mean, we're, we're here at about 13 minutes, moving on towards 14. And uh, getting those Infestors, I definitely think, is a good follow-up, as well as a couple of Roaches getting added in. I also like the way... Ooh, there's a money scam by Boxer. He's going to see the Infestation Pit, but there's not really that much you can easily do about it. Um, Infestors are just an all-round great unit. But what I love is that Boxer, who opened up with this Blue Flame Hellion Marine play, the biggest problem with the Blue Flame opening is that it's hard to do anything after. You have so much time invested in getting those Hellions that all your tank and Marine production is behind. So Boxer knows that he couldn't put much follow-up pressure, so what did he do, Husky? He's going for mass Ex or, uh, upgrades. Look at this. Already getting the 2-1 on his infantry, already getting the level 2 on his metal. So even though he's losing a little bit of time with the Blue Flame Hellions, he's getting himself set up for an incredibly strong late game push. Also, he is working on getting his third base as well, building that command center safely at his natural. And you got to remember, he still has the complete map vision. So if anything moves to the center of the map, he is going to be aware of it. The only thing he's going to have to defend against is going to be any sort of drop play, which he does have a missile turret here or there set up in defensive locations for things like Mutalist. So it seems like he's preparing for as much as he possibly can. There is going to be Neural Parasite on the way for X-Lord, though. And really, a lot of the, the, the Neural Parasite play just comes down to the positioning. So, I mean, he's preparing with siege tanks as he does have his siege mode done. And he's just he's just got a grab bag of units right now, Sean. I think a lot of it's going to come down to the micro and positioning of said units. Wow, this is a very bold play by Boxer. He's going for the gold expansion while pushing up along the left side. Smart play as well, considering how much damage he did at the start of the game. There's 11 roaches in production right now. We see the infestors hanging out at the backside. All the upgrades are done now for the infestors. No burrow is on the map yet, so we can't do any sort of little tosses with those infested Terrans to try to take out the tanks. We do see Boxer slowly approaching forward, and that is a scary-looking army, and look at the upgrades on it. 2-1 on the infantry, 2-0 on the Thors. Here come the Infestors, and no, they're just waiting to get into a good position, and there's the Neural Parasite taking out the tanks. Yeah, Great trying, job to use, Lord. trying to use the Thors right here to hold this up, and he's being as cost effective as possible. Maybe even able to snipe this Thor is wow. going to be able to be focusing it down. But you got to look at supply counts there a lot closer than they were just seconds ago. Fungal growth being utilized as well as more of the mind controlling here. Can X Lord hang on? I would say he definitely went into this at a huge Wow, distance. look at that. X Lord, that was one of the most impressive defenses I've seen in a long time. We see him snagging all of those units with neural parasites and fungal growths, and the food count is now even. The worker count is relatively even. Can he get that one? No! <laughs> Infested Terran tries to pop out to pick off the sixth hit point medevac with the ultra deep red Thor. That would have been a huge win for Xlord if he could have cleaned everything up, and now Xlord has the delight of going into mass drone production. But you know what, Husky? He needs to catch up on upgrades fast. None have even been started for Xlord. Yeah, he just finished his burrow, but that's not going to do a lot if you're going against the the heavy mech play of of Boxer. I mean, he has 2-0, like you mentioned before, which that is just insane how early he was able to get up the mech upgrades as well as his infantry upgrades. So if you're wondering why he lost that battle, maybe Boxer just spent so much money on upgrades, wasn't able to get the massive army that you might expect for someone that was in his position. The supplies are 129 to 133, although Boxer now has this high-yield expansion. And look at how well he has turned at this expansion. He's got missile turrets, he's got siege tanks, and a planetary fortress. I feel like that expansion is going nowhere anytime soon. May take Broodlords, which you do see Hive Tech on the way right now for X-Lord. With the Hive Tech on the way, though, I mean, Boxer's going to be muling that gold as much as he can. Often it's a good technique for Terrence to try to just suck up all those resources as fast as possible, and then there's just no more expansion left to even have to worry about defending. Boxer's going to buy himself a little more time with a naked lone drop up at the top. We call it naked because there's no uh, second attack to couple it with. It is its own lone thing, and it is going to get absolutely demolished. There's the fungal growths going down, even capturing the medevac there as well. And one marine apparently uh, gets healed faster than fungal growth can deal damage. We also see a drop there at the left position, dealing a lot of damage, uh, but the roaches are able to clean it up appropriately. 
Yeah, he was able to clean that up, Sean. And I really like the sensor tower placement of Boxer right in the center at that gold expo. I mean, while he may, well, he does still have the towers, but if he loses those, he can at least still see the troop movements. And the drop on the left side is going to be held off by those roaches. Looking at the workers killed, Boxer has only been able to kill one worker this entire game. Wow! So that is going to be one good thing for x -Lord. I mean, one worker. That's actually astounding. And look at all these roaches here ready to greet that force. Another big drop, a Thor drop by Boxer in the main, interestingly. It looks like he is trying to go for that evolution chamber. Boxer knows where his advantage is going to lie. It's in those upgrades. And there's the mind control on the Thor. And there's the stem to try to pick it off. Successful in that attempt. But it looks like he's got to be really careful. That's a lot of medevacs that are available to be fungal growth. But is he going to get it? And he does! This could be huge if he just slowly picks them off one at a time. The medevac at the top also getting taken down. Thor gets taken down. Corruptors ripping apart those medevacs. X-Lord with an extremely impressive pullback with that Roach Infestor Force. Absolutely, and he's really getting the units that he needs. He's starting to transition into more Zerglings. Sean, is that a fusion core that I see going down right now? I think that it is. I haven't seen one in so long that I forget what they look like. Oh my gosh, I'm doing the fusion core dance, Husky. We might be seeing battle cruisers. This is so awesome. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't think that X Lord has enough gas to go Broodlord with Corruptor, but that Neural Parasite still going to be very rough for those battle cruisers to deal with. You do not want battle cruisers raining down on Thor's. Thor's, quite frankly, suck against battle cruisers. And there's a, a nice burrow play. And ooh, ooh he's got to be careful, though. One scan is going to let him take a lot out. Yeah, he's attempting to, to take out this base on the left side. And this is interesting to me that Boxer is doing so many drops like this. Usually you'll see drops with just Marines and Marauders. But he's mixing in Thors and Siege Tanks, which unfortunately for Boxer, they take up a lot of room inside those medevacs. Able to do quite a bit of damage here, though, with good positioning on the left side. These Siege Tanks are left for dead, but they've already got a total of, what is that, 34 kills. And they are starting to attack that hatchery as well. Really, X-Lord needs to hang on to this, and you can see he most likely will. He does have his Broodlords kind of headed on that way, but God, those Siege Tanks do a lot of damage with that plus two attack. Although, this is going to reveal to Boxer, there is a chance for Broodlords, but look at that shot, as I mentioned before, the high yield expansion and nearly mined out by the time those Broodlords can even get close. Great timing there by Boxer. Now moving up along the left side with a bunch of Marines, Marauders, some Vikings, some tanks there as well. And oh no, the Broodlords are getting caught completely off guard and Boxer sprinting up, manages to take out one, two with relative ease. The Infestors just a little bit too far back. And oh no, the Infestors now approaching themselves and there the Marauders are there to greet, picking them off one at a time. X-Lord having a total collapse after that brilliant pullback. And now it looks like X-Lord trying to get himself repositioned with those Infestors. He's trying to throw down Fungal Growth to keep those uh, Marauders at bay, but Boxer has them a little bit too far spread out, and see you later, Infestors. The Infestor army is essentially completely dissipated for X-Lord. It's just going to be these Corruptors, a handful of Broodlords, and 20 Zerglings about to pop. Looking at the production tab, well, now they're gone, but the Battle Cruiser's just now finishing, so he did decide to go ahead and get that. And you got to remember that X-Lord does have Broodlords and Corruptors on the field, so, I mean, that is a pretty solid combination here going against Siege Tanks, Marauders, Marines, and Battle Cruisers. But it's going to come down to a lot of times the positioning, which has been not the best so far. It does look like the hatch getting dangerously close to death. 86 <laughs> HP remains, just barely going to save that one. And uh, looking at the units to have 58 drones to 68 SCVs, still a very tense moment as Boxer is only on four bases. So is the Zerg player, but look at this. Completing two of his orbital commands can easily take two more bases. Great dropship management by X-Lord, just denying another drop on the main, even burrowing the investors. <laughs> Scanned by Boxer, Ashley wants to keep that as low as possible. Wow, a transfuse again, and another transfuse. <laughs> This is quite the dance going on in the main, and that, there's even a Marine hopping yeah, up Yeah, you gotta the remember that the Infestors are, do count as armored, so they take that additional damage from Marauders. They melt through them exceptionally well. And right now, I mean, just looking at the unit supplies, 119 to 192. I do like that X-Lord has a lot of Broodlords as well as Corruptors to deal with the majority of the Terran units. As Boxer, just looking at the units tab here, Sean, does not have a lot of Vikings to deal with that. So, I mean, in any situation, when you're 100 supply down, it's not a good one. But at least his unit composition is solid. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though, for these overwhelming forces. We see that bottom right is up and running. There's an extra orbital command there. And Boxer still going for these drops at the left. And a drop in the main. The drop in the main is going to be completely decimated by this Zergling Infestor fourth. But those are three, two Marines against zero, zero Zerglings. That means those fungal growths are 
pretty much the only thing keeping him alive. In the meantime, at the left, there's Broodlords there. But, oh, Battlecruisers to greet them. Hello. Target firing them down one at a time. There's no Infestors to do the necessary uh, fun or the necessary Neural Parasites. Now all the Corruptors pulling back down to that bottom left side. But the expansion is going to fall. And Box are showing some very cool creative flair. Absolutely, Sean. And unfortunately for X-Lord, his Corruptors were way out of position just now arriving to take out these air units. And if they were here, this battle would have definitely looked, I, I would say, a lot different as the Battlecruisers. You can see how quickly they melt away. No upgrades on those Battlecruisers at all. So it's not like that. Uh, the, the upgrades we're seeing on the infantry, which is 3-2. That, that drop in the main just now getting cleaned up. A lot of units lost there. Still, somehow, X-Lord is hanging on with 120 supply. But the fact of the matter is, is that Boxer has expanded now to the right side, dropping a lot of mules there. So he's going to have a lot of money to spend getting remaxed out. And if you look at the production tab, 11 Marines and the 3 attack, 3 armor, uh, working on that for his mech units still, as well as his infantry. So following it up with tons of units, 11 Marines at a time, and uh, just not a good situation for X-Lord, I would say, this entire game. But he has been able to hang on. There's still the, the high-yield expansion in the center if he can somehow grab that, but he's quickly running out of options, especially after losing that fourth. And here's a push coming up the right side, and this might be the first direct attack that Boxer's made all game long. It's pretty much only done harassment and big drops uh, with battle cruisers, tanks, Thors, the whole gamut being dropped down from those medevacs, and now we see X-Lord starting to try to swing forward with these infestors. Oh no! Boxer spots them, picks them all off, scans. These five marauders, the heroes of the day, and there's the good game. X-Lord doesn't even try to play it out. The loss of those Infestors was the loss of the momentum. And Husky, you were saying it before this match started. It is so fun to watch how creative Boxer is. Yeah, a lot of people may may watch that and be a little bit confused as to exactly what's going on. Literally, I think Boxer made, I'm trying to think if he made every unit. I don't know if we saw a Raven or not, but regardless, we did see a heavy, heavy mix of units. I mean, we had Thors, Marines, Siege Tanks, and it kind of shows you on one hand why players tend not to do that because, Sean, you saw the amount of drops he did. It is so difficult to individually micro those units because you're going against Neural Parasite. You have to make sure your Thors are attacking the right units. You have to make sure your Siege Tanks are Siege up. The Marines are in the right spot so it's it's definitely it, it takes an inhuman brain to be able to manage that boxer was able to do it though and he refused to stick with just marine marauder medevac or anything like that and i really got to hand it to him sean for being able to win with uh basically getting essentially almost all every attacking unit that you possibly can it just really really cool cool style from boxer but we also get the chance to see the x lord who was ridiculously far behind at the start pulling back with amazing neural parasites amazing infester roach usage so that really goes to show you even though x lord and boxer now won one in that group this does mean that x lord still has a lot of promise to do well despite the fact that he has tsl killer nesty Terran in his group it's going to be very tough for him but i still think he has a lot of cool games ahead of him which you should definitely check out in future g force sc2 pro-am matches that will be casted by myself husky and many others so without any further ado we're going to go record some more matches aren't we husky yeah, we are. So, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. The GSBA proving to be awesome. X-Lord, I just want to say, played exceptionally well against Boxer, who's been playing since the dawn of time. So, got a hand to him. Not shabby at all, hanging on that long. So, keep an eye on this group. Hope you guys enjoy it. And, of course, we'll see you guys next time.